If you've been following along on my Facebook page, you know that I just started a worm bin, and I finally today got the worms in the mail. Um, you, I got them from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm, and he sends he sends you red wigglers through the mail, which is the composting worm. It stays in the top four inches of the soil, and uh, you know I'm really hoping to get some vermicompost. I tried this uh, last year in the fall, in the winter time. I created my first vermicompost pile. And the idea was to add enough materials to the pile to attract worms. I actually saw a video that Uncle Jim did describing how to actually create a vermicompost pile. And it turns out that it didn't work. Then again, I didn't add any worms to the pile. I was just, I was hoping that worms would come, find the materials that I was adding to this pile, and they would compost it for me. I was very skeptical of the whole thing because I wasn't sure if I added worms to that pile, wouldn't they just squirm away? You know, what, what would, what, what's forcing them to be in the pile? So I decided that worms would probably be a bad idea in an open environment, whereas if they were in a bin, that would probably be a much better idea. Then I decided, since my worm pile is not working, I'm going to change my pile uh, into a compost pile and just try to compost it. And I'll get it running throughout the whole winter and then by the time the spring comes, uh, hopefully the whole thing will be composted down into nothing and um, I'll have fresh soil for the, for the spring and I can put my soil all over all my plants. But that didn't work either and I got a little discouraged by the whole thing. I know uh, a lot of gardening is trial and error, but there was just so many things going on. You're going to fail whatever you do the first time you do it. Uh, but like I said, there was just so much going on and I just decided to um, forget about it for a while. The summer is now happening and I really want to do all my composting and all the mulching and all the, all the stuff. I think the best time to do it is in the fall. The reason I think the best time to do it is in the fall is because the leaves fall from the trees. It's such a rich new, uh, source of nutrients for my uh, orchard and my plants. It's just, it's such a valuable resource and Rather than just collecting all the leaves like I had before and throwing them in a compost pile, why don't I just put the leaves and all that right in the beds, right, on, right as mulch? By the time the spring comes around, it is gonna compost out. So I'm really excited to be starting the worm bins now, to be using all the materials I collected last fall, and even all the yard waste I just continuously, continuously get throughout the season. I can now put them in these bins, and then when the fall comes, I'll collect all the leaves, mulch everything once again and uh, I'll be good to go. Now let me show you guys where the uh, the bin is. This this right here in front of me was the compost pile and you can see I had this chicken wire set up here. This chicken wire just wrapped around these poles. There's another pole right over there. Uh, this is a shade cloth here that's attached to it but actually the uh, the chicken wire was wrapped around here. Lots of airflow. I didn't water it. I didn't turn it. It was just a disaster. I didn't really know what I was doing when it comes to composting. I asked you guys a lot of questions. I even did a video on it. In the end, I had a lot of carbon sources and no food scraps and no green material. I really just had carbon. That's it. So it just kind of turned into leaf mold. And when I was flipping this thing around and filling these bins that are under here, there's five bins. I realized that actually the leaves that I collected in the fall have now turned pretty much into leaf mold and they turned black. So something was happening. Didn't see any worms in here. But now I have some worms from Uncle Jim's worm farm here. And he gives you instructions and just uh, many common questions and what to do with the worms. And here is the worm bag itself. And I've seen Uncle Jim, I've seen a video of him do this. I saw him set up a vermicompost pile and I also saw him you know, just care for these worms when you get them in the mail. I also have here some cornmeal, and he describes in one of his videos that cornmeal is actually a good source of food for the worms. This is kind of something I was using to attract the worms to my, my pile last year that really ended up uh, doing nothing. On each of these bins, I have holes drilled in here for air. Very important. Through my research, you know, I'm not claiming to be a worm expert here, but through my research, I've realized that worms need a couple things. You know, they need to breathe, so they need air. They breathe through their skin. They need a proper level level of moisture. It can't be dry. 
it also can't be too wet. You want the level of moisture uh, of the material to be, when you squeeze it, very little water, if any, comes out of there. If there's too much water that comes out, then uh, it's too wet. And if there's no water that comes out, then maybe it's too dry. The next thing they need is food. And you need to constantly be feeding them with something. The food scraps is something that's really great. Um, really anything from your garden that came from your garden at one point or came from somebody else's garden or farm or whatever, you can throw in there. So you can throw in newspaper, any kind of paper that came from a tree, you know, any kind of uh, leaves or sticks or mulch or, you know, there's many different types of, types of mulch, maybe some straw, maybe some hay, you know, just throw everything in there that you want. Um, really anything that's plant-based you can put in there and they're going to eat it. In fact, I'm so interested in worms, I saw a TED talk recently about a guy who was uh, vermicomposting in his house with worm bins and he was he even got his worms to compost a toothbrush. Uh, it wasn't a plastic toothbrush, it was a special type of plastic. If we all just started switching over to this plastic and had our worms started to eat this plastic, you know, in our landfills rather than it just sitting there, uh, we could really introduce a lot of worms into our landfills and just compost everything and get rid of our, our huge trash problem that we have on Earth. So I really think, and I'm really passionate about it now, after watching this guy's video. I'm really passionate about it because now I can see the potential of what worms can do. I had no idea that worms could eat a, a toothbrush. <laughs> there was no signs of the toothbrush in this guy's bin after like 20 some days or something. I mean, that's just, that's just nuts. So here I am with the bins and so they need food. We talked about uh, food, we talked about air, we talked about water. They also need to be in the shade. You know, and that's not why I have the shade cloth here, but the bins actually are providing enough shade. You know, this is a very shady thing in here. You know, uh, the only holes in here, the only light that can get in is these holes. The reason why I have these, the shade cloth here is 100% because of heat. And you don't want your worms getting too hot, you don't want them getting too cold. This is not a compost pile. You know, I don't want this to heat up to 160 degrees. I want this thing to stay at a pretty reasonable temperature. And if the sun is shining on these black, these black containers here, it's just gonna heat this thing up very quickly. And well, the worms I bought are gonna die. So they need to be, I think below like 90. There's gonna be a point in which this container probably gets over 90, but for the most part, this area that I have these in here, you know, it's just in the complete shade for most of the day. And the late afternoon, it does get some sun, but that's why I have the shade cloth. And the shade cloth is like, uh, I believe 80%, 90% shade cloth. It really is shading these pretty well. And it really didn't cost me a whole lot. And it fit this like width here just perfectly. It was just nuts how perfect this, this shade cloth just came together for this whole thing here. At some point, I mean, I still have, I still have plenty of materials left over for these bins. You know, these bins are basically full. I mean, I just keep adding stuff here. Now, just feeling around in this bed, it doesn't feel all that hot. So, I think the shade cloth's doing a pretty damn good job. I think we need to make this a little bit more moist. When we put these worms in here, perhaps uh, they have the right level of moisture. So I will water this slightly, but let's let's go ahead and put the worms in there because everything else is ready to go. So as you guys can see down in here, there's just tons of worms squirming around. They shipped this thing on, they shipped it on Monday and it's here now on uh, Tuesday. So the thing came immediately. Uh, the worms look very healthy. They don't look like they're deprived of anything really. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split up these worms. They say not to split them up. In the directions, it says don't split them up. They like to be colonized, but uh, I'm gonna split them up into these six beds. I have no other ch in these six bins. I have no other choice. So let's do that now. All right. So the the uh, worms are in the bins. Split up pretty equally between the bins. They're already starting to dive down into the darkness. Believe it or not, um, I'm probably gonna keep these lids off just so that I know that they're not gonna escape. Um, it's suggested that you actually put a, you shine a light on these just so that um, 
they don't escape for the first like you know one or two days so I'm gonna keep this lid open and whatnot and just have them uh, kind of acclimate to their environment and then a couple hours from now I'll probably close it when I see most of them you know driving down towards the uh, the bin here I'm also gonna take some of this uh, cornmeal and actually give it to them as food and we're gonna just spread it around the bed here all these bins that was way too much so let me put you guys down and I'll get to that as well all right so the cornmeal's in including the wrapper here because they can eat that too and now I'm just gonna give them all some water give these beds a little bit of moisture This should be okay for now. I don't want to overdo it. And then what I'll do is I'll come back tomorrow and check out what's you know what's going on in the bed. See if I need to do anything for these guys. See if I need to add anything. I have plenty of cornmeal and other food scraps I can add here. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I wanted to show you just what I'm doing. And I wanted to show you, maybe give you some inspiration so that you can do this too. You know, like I said, there's only really, there's not really that many things that these worms need and they eat just about everything. They just eat our trash. They're just unbelievably just useful in that way. And what they'll end up doing with for us is giving us extremely nutritious soil at the end of it. So I'm really happy to have gotten these and gotten this all set up. I really hope this works out for them and for me and uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. So stay tuned, guys, if you're interested in worms. You know, if you have any more information that I should know, comment down below. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I hope you guys can do this, too.